Show. Did you have a chance to party with any of the cast members this Saturday Night I Live? Did. <clears throat> I did, actually. But uh, I, I didn't really, because we didn't have that on TV in England, so I didn't really know uh, John Belushi, who he was, and I think. So there's all these, like, now I know all these famous people were there, but mm. you know, they had this bar in New York, and uh, after the show, we were invited back there, you know, and it was just full of all these celebrities. And uh, I got out there about half six the next morning, and like, oh, my God, you know, like, but it was it was great fun for a young man to you know do all that kind of thing. Keith, Keith Richards turned up and that sort of made my uh, oh, okay. one of my heroes. Even though I sort of like pretended I wasn't interested, you know, like was, you know, the punk thing. You sort of like you didn't, you know. But I was impressed, you know. And he came up to me after the we did Saturday Night Live and said, "Hey boy, you know, if you keep your head together, you, you'll you'll be all right," you know. <laughs> and it was nice, you know. He was he was very friendly. That's iconic. Yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's nice when you meet your heroes, you know, and they turn out to be okay. You know, Bowie and uh, Iggy Pop I met, and uh, they were very nice. They didn't uh, talk down to me or treat me, you know, they treated me fine, you know. Where did you meet them? Oh, with Bowie, we, we did a couple of sport gigs with him in, uh, in the 90s, and he came to see us with Jagger in the 80s, uh, and we played New York the last date of a tour. But I didn't really get to speak to him then. But, uh, you know, Bowie was a big fan of, uh, not, I was a big fan of Bowie when I was a kid in the early 70s. I had, I had the hairdo and all the rest of it, you know. And then well, that's, that's where Z Roddy Radiation came from. Because I was sort of doing the Ziggy, St I didn't do all the makeup stuff, but like, I, was, I was doing the Ziggy Stardust thing. So my brother called me Roddy, Radi Roddy Radiation as a joke, you know. So when the punk thing came in, I used that name as a stage name. Because everyone had silly names then, you know. And then you were also very influenced by Iggy Pop, so what was meeting him like? Did he have any advice for you? Well, he was going for a bad patch at the time, in the early 80s, and I, I, I think it was a, the Dead Boys were playing the Peppermint Lounge in New York, I think it was. And uh, I somehow found myself backstage, probably trying to get a free beer, you know. And Iggy Pop's there, so like, I get introduced to him, and he, he kind of like goes, yeah, come with me, boy, and he takes me in the shower store, and I'm going like, is he trying to freak me out or something, you know? But anyway, we got on fine, had a drink, and I went back to his hotel with him and his girlfriend and uh, chatted to the hours of the morning, you know? How do you feel that the 1996 reunion with the specials differs from where the specials are now? Well, it wasn't the full lineup. We didn't pretend it was the, like the original specials, but we had like the same sort of ethics and the same goals, really. But it was good fun for, for a few years, but... Uh, I don't know, we, we kind of made a few bad business decisions and uh, we just kind of ended up on this never-ending tour, living on a tour bus with no money. And it kind of got a bit gruesome, you know. And then now? Well, the reunion thing, it's, it's gone absolutely brilliant. Mm. You know, we were like totally knocked out to, to realise that so many people loved the music and, and, and there's lots of young kids turn up as well and they know all the words. And it, you know, in Japan, Australia, Canada, here, you know, like Europe. And there's all these bands that said, say we inspired them, you know, from No Doubt to Rancid and to umpteen, you know, Blur, all the English bands. And it, it's just kind of uh, strange because we don't think of ourselves as being uh, heroes or pop stars, you know. We all kept ourselves pretty much uh, down to earth, you know. How satisfying is that for you to have these, these huge artists that are influential now for their time to come up to you and, and give you accolades like that. I don't know. It, it's, uh, I don't like to think about it too much because it might go to my head. You know? That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, I think you've got you to keep your feet firmly on the ground in this business, otherwise you could quite easily crack up like a lot of people do. How did you find out that Amy Winehouse was going to be covering Hey Little Rich Girl. I found out after she'd done it, you know, like, she just picked it and I don't, I don't think she even knew I wrote it, you know, I think mm -hmm. she just thought it was a, a song she liked and she did a version and uh, my publisher told me that uh, she'd covered it and I asked him for an advance. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bought a new uh, gold top, Gibson Les Paul and a new amp, you know, which was great. You're always thinking of, of your, your music. Well, it was a case of I, I, I hadn't had a lot of money for for many years. Yeah. I'd, I'd gone back to my old trade as a painter and decorator and just did a few bar gigs with different bands and and uh, all of a sudden we're back in the, the limelight again, you know, and touring the war world, you know. It's amazing. I know you got a chance to meet her and also she performed with oh, you she guys sang on with stage. Us, yeah. yeah. She was fine. I, she wasn't out of it. She wasn't drunk. She wasn't on drugs as far as I could tell. Mm -hmm. She was great.
very friendly. You know, I was very, very cut up when I found out she died. You know, it was such a waste. You know, it would have been great for the specials could have backed her. You know, or Terry could have done a duet with her. Yeah, you know, that would have been nice. You know. Did you get to know her? Well, I spoke to her about three times, and uh, I thanked her for like covering Hello Rich mm -hmm. Girl and that. And she said uh, she got like, some young friend with her, some young lady, and she's like. Uh, my friend wants to marry you. And I said, I'm sorry I'm married already. What she meant by that, I've no idea. But uh, it was kind of cute. What were the highlights of some of your bands after the specials? Let's start off with the Tear Jerkers. Right, well, uh, Nick Lowe produced uh, our first single, and that was uh, quite interesting. Because I thought, because of his roots, he'd, he'd do a good job. I didn't quite like the way he did it, actually. He kind of slowed it down a bit. Because originally it was... Uh, more of a, a swing, ska, country song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, he, 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 he sort of slowed it down to like, let there be drums kind of pattern. But uh, he was a nice guy. You know. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. You've worked with a lot of legends. Well, so I've, I've met all them, all them guys like uh, Nick Lowe and Dave Edmonds and Wilco Johnson. Like, you know, they all hung out together with Elvis Costello, you know, they were yeah. all friends. So even though we were a bit younger than those guys, so we were kind of like the young kids at the other table, you know, whippersnappers, you know. The Bone Diggers. Right, I did the Bone Diggers. Well, basically, the tear jerkers kind of folded up and I, got, I went back to my old painting job because I'd run out of money. The specials money didn't last very long. So, uh, I don't know, I, just, I started jamming with this friend of mine, uh, just two acoustic guitars around around the pubs and you know, folk clubs and that. And then uh, I met a guy I'd taught to play guitar and he took up double bass. So we did a, a three piece and then we added a drummer and uh, did that for a few years and toured uh, Ireland and Europe and England quite a lot. You know, We got a CD out in Japan and Canada. and We never got over here, but uh, that was a lot of fun. What do you love most about your band, the Ska Billy Rebels? Well, it's a chance for me to be the boss, I guess, after all those years having Jerry Dammers telling me sort of uh, what I could do and what I couldn't do, and all of a sudden I, c I can actually sort of uh, see my own vision music-wise, you know. I let the guys throw ideas in and, uh, you know, develop it from there, you know. What are the fans saying about the Ska Billy Rebels CD, Blues Attack? Some of the Specials fans get it, some don't, you know. But it, it's, it's, it's gaining momentum all the time, and a lot of people are getting into it. So I've got great hopes it'll go further, you know. How excited are you about closing out the 2012 Olympics with the specials? All oh, right, yeah. I only found out recently. They, they probably didn't tell me in case I sort of let it out on the net or something, you know. It's going to be a biggie, a real biggie, you know. My daughters were very impressed. Oh, I bet. Yeah, and my mum was really pleased. Yeah. <laughs> I always wish my dad was still alive to to see it all, you know. It's a shame he went a few years ago. That's amazing, and I mean, Blur will be also playing yeah. that, and I believe New Order. New Order, yeah, well, that's a good lineup. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you're in with some great company, plus hope, the whole hope, world will be watching. I hope it don't rain. It's, it's Hyde Park in England, you know what I mean? Like, you, you can't always count on the weather. But you'll play no matter what, the <laughs> show no, must I go think, on. I think God's a, good, a big fan of Scar, so he, he makes sure the sun shines. Nice. So. <laughs> no doubt. I did a gig with the whole band, uh, me, uh, Rankin Roger from the, the English mm -hmm. Beat, uh, Limbell from the Specials, mm -hmm. and Neville. We, we, did a, we came over and did a gig for Amnesty International uh, was about 10, 15 years ago, I think. And uh, we had no doubt backers, you know, and that was kind of cool, you know. Because <laughs> they were sort of slightly in awe of us, which is silly, really, because they've, they've probably made a lot more money than we ever made, you know. Yeah. The singer turned up at the gig we played in LA uh, a couple of years ago. Gwen Stefani. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really get a chance to speak to her, but uh, next time maybe. It must be like a trip to like be like gods to these people that are everywhere. I mean, you're constantly hearing their songs on the radio. They're ubiquitous. Well, I don't know. Like I said, like uh, we try to keep our feet on the ground, mm -hmm. you know, and we talk to the kids the same way as we talk to the pop stars. You know, we try to be level-headed and, and not not become space cadets, you know. What is that in you that, that keeps you humble? We have met certain bands that haven't treated us very well in the past, so we always thought, and the Clash treated us well, so we try to carry on that uh, thing of like treating support bands good and giving them a sound check and, and speaking to people like people, you know, not uh, ignoring people or talking down to people, you know. 
What brings you the most peace in your life right now? Uh, I just moved house recently and I got fields behind the house. I like to sit on my back porch and just look at the fields and the squirrels and the foxes and the birds and, you know, walk the dogs across the fields and that's kind of cool. And I, I'm a, a big civil, American Civil War buff, you know. I collect books and different things. I went to Gettysburg last year and that, mm -hmm. that was uh, that's what I always wanted to do, you know. So I, from an early teenager, I, I read all the books and saw the movies. My mother was a big Gone with the Wind fan, you know. I know now what, what, what the truth was about it all, but uh, when I was a kid, I didn't realise uh, what it was about, really, the slavery thing, you know. Now, you had a super group for a, a short time called Three Men and Black. Yeah, that was good fun. Dave Waitling and uh, Jake Burns, for Stiff Little Fingers, uh -huh. you know. We was, it was just like going around uh, theatres in England, you know, like sit down theatres, we'd have acoustic guitars and we'd tell stories about the songs, you know, which I'd never done before. Whereas like Dave Waitling is great at, with the chat, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Jake Burns being like a, an Irishman, he, he, can, he can spin the blarney, you know. And then like Pauline Black's an actress as well as a singer. So I'm like trying to compete with these people who are really good at talking, so I'd, I'd have like, uh, my story cheat sheet on the floor and like trying to sort of uh, tell the stories. I got into it, but I, I did find it hard to start with, you know. Dance craze. Now, right. the, a documentary, I guess it was supposed to be a documentary, but it ended up essentially being a concert film. Yeah, well, I, I don't really know, except for some of Jerry Damas's babies, you know, like, and it was kind of going towards the end before the band mm -hmm. split up. So like by that time we, we were all kind of like, I don't know, a bit jaded by it all, <laughs> yeah. because we just, we just, they just toured us constantly, you know. We never, we, we toured England, did a huge tour in Europe as well, and then we had like a week off, and we came to the States and did six weeks around the States, so we were just all dog tired. And living in, you know, uh, small spaces together, and not being, we didn't grow up as buddies at college or mm -hmm. school, so we were just guys in different bands that got together, and. Uh, the music worked, but there was a lot of friction because we were different lifestyles, you know, and different personalities. So being cooped up together on a tour bus for weeks on end, and little things kind of annoy you, you know, and it, it, it didn't help much. So the, the band kind of uh, were kind of going different directions musically as well as personal-wise, you know. So when Dance, Dance Craze came out, it was kind of, it, it, was, it wasn't, it should have come out probably a year before that. Mm -hmm. And of course the music thing in, in England had changed to the new romantics yeah. as well. And the, everyone wanted to change from the social comment scar back to like, let's all get dressed up and uh, pose about. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> when the specials put up in 81, I, I kind of like wanted to forget it all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd, I'd really had enough of it. It took me a few years so I could even listen to some of the special stuff especially the second album, it just brought back all the bad memories, you know. So I had a few problems at the time, uh, personal family problems, you know. And uh, it, that and the intense touring kind of uh, soured it a bit for me, you know. And it took me quite a few years to be able to appreciate it again. What did you think of Fun Boy 3? <laughs> well, it wasn't my kind of thing. <laughs> well, I, I was doing the tearjerk as playing gone back to playing rock and roll again. So, uh, no, it, it was just too poppy for me, you know, it just, <laughs> but, 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 you know, it, it, but like that, that was the, the nature of the charts at yeah. the time. They had to sort of uh, go for a different image and fit in with all the, the romantic thing and Boy George and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, Spandau Ballet and Duran Duran, you know, but uh, they did all right for, for a while, you know. Yeah. Roddy, what's next for you? So I'm playing with Discovery Rebels over here and uh, we've got quite a few dates. They've been going great. Uh, lovely band. So yeah, I'm, I'm living a pretty busy life at the moment. I just wish I was 20 years younger, really. <laughs> I, I it's, always, it's, it hurts more nowadays. I always it? ask people if you could have your, the brain that you have now in an 18-year-old body, yeah. would you do it? I don't know. It's probably half the fun, sort of like the, making the mistakes and learning from them, you know. Roddy, it's been great having you on the Blaring Thank Out with you, Eric mate. Blair show. Cheers, Eric. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show with Roddy Radiation of the specials. Signing off. The Blaring Out show.